Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch, and once again, I'm in the back porch blind. It is springtime. Today, I think, is May the 12th, and I haven't been out here in the blind for quite some time, but I've been seeing lots of good bird activity, so I've decided to come out here, and the thing I'm the most excited about is downy woodpeckers. I've been seeing lots of downy woodpeckers, but so far, I haven't seen one today. I'm working today with Old Faithful, my Canon R7, and the 100 to 500 telephoto zoom lens really a great birding combination with 32 and a half megapixels on a 1.6 crop giving me 800 millimeters full frame equivalent but i won't be using all of that most likely if i'm shooting on the railing i'm usually between two and 400 millimeters depending on the side of the burn and the railing's probably 12 feet from the front of my blind here and that's where i have all my perches and also some feeding stations Here's a quick look at the blind from the outside, featuring my 100 to 500 poking through the camo netting. Here's my feeder station set up. I got the suet feeder mounted on this branch. The branch is mounted on the table. And here's the droppings below the suet feeder that a lot of the birds just come and land right there. Here's my stump perch, which has the top drilled out and I put nut and berry seed in there. Here's my next perch, which has the angle, and I cut it off a little bit shorter. It used to go up about two or three inches higher right there. All right here's another perch that I have. Got my favorite shot of the day on this one, I think. And another perch, which I didn't see any action on this one today. And here is Another perch that didn't see any action today. And way up here is a feeder that brings the birds in as well. This one's filled with black oil sunflower seeds. For that, the cardinal, which I think is probably Scarlet, who I, I live viewed her on her nest a few times. Scarlet came up and she sat on the top of one of my perches that I had carved out and put bird seed in. So let's look at Scarlet. So there she is, the Northern Cardinal that we have nicknamed Scarlet. We believe this is the same one that was on the nest that we live streamed two or three times. 238 millimeter shot at F5 on one of the perches. And I have a bluebird house on the back side of the porch right back here. And the bluebirds have gotten to where they like to come to my suet feeder and eat. And there's the suet feeder's kind of hanging over the railing and birds eat off the suet feeder and little droppings from the suet feeder land on the railing and the bluebird landed on the railing and ate some of those little tiny suet feeder droppings which uh it's not exactly the perch i would want but it's always nice to get a picture of a male bluebird in good light this is the male eastern bluebird at 324 millimeters i didn't realize that i had this shot when i made my clip i mean i had already made this shot but i didn't realize it came out good that's the neighbor's house in the background and the grass at the bottom of their house. But with this much bokeh, you can't tell what it is. And it just looks like a field or something in the background. Here's a couple of shots of the male eastern bluebird with the suet that has dropped onto the handrail. The suet feeders directly above this beautiful bird. And even though it's on the suet, I just love these shots. These are both 400 millimeters f6.3. I just got my first of what I hope will be many downy woodpecker shots this morning. I was only at, I think, 223 millimeters, but it almost filled the frame. I mean, I'll be able to crop it to 16 by 9, which is what I like to do for these videos. There's a downy woodpecker on my angled perch. Turned out really nice, I thought. I think this might be a young one, either that or a female, and this is 223 millimeters F5. A lot of the birds are flying straight to the suet feeder instead of landing on my perches. I like it better when they come up and land on a perch and perch for just a minute and before going over to the suet feeder. But I got a house finch on one of my other perches that I like a lot better. 300 millimeter shot, I think. Now here are two or three 300 millimeter shots at F5.6 of a female house finch on the top of my stump perch. Yeah, it ended up being three shots and I like the way these came out. I think this one is probably my favorite of the three, but they're all 300 millimeters and all f5.6. I was shooting at 1 500th for these, and the ISO landed on 640. 
That's definitely my favorite of the house finch shots. Mr. Bluebird came back and landed on my perch that goes up at an angle. And I actually shortened that perch just a little bit because if you land right on the top of it, it kind of puts the neighbor's house in the background. But I didn't shorten it enough. So the neighbor's house is in the background, but at least there's no stairs or garbage cans. It's just the white of the wall. So, And here is the male eastern bluebird that came back to that same perch with the neighbor's house in the background. This is 270 millimeters, 1 500th, and ISO 125, wide open at f5.6. The male red-bellied woodpecker has been landing on the gutters of our house and our neighbor's houses and making tons of racket. <laughs> But the female came up and landed on one of my perches, and I'm pretty sure I got a shot of her. And then the downy woodpecker came up, and I definitely got a shot of it. And there's a house finch. This is the female red-bellied woodpecker at 223 millimeters, still shooting at 1 500th, wide open at S5 and 500 ISO. She's on the side of the stump perch. This is the same perch that the house finch was on the top of. And you can tell this is a female because she's gray right here. The males will be red or orange all the way from here to here but the females don't have the red orange color right here pretty sure this is the same downy woodpecker coming back to the exact same perch this time it's 238 millimeters f5.0 500 iso and 1 500th of a second i like that perch it's given me a lot of great pictures since i put it there a couple years ago today i'm shooting manual shutter speed manual aperture and automatic ISO. I've been setting my exposure compensation right on zero. Usually I do a lot of uh, minus a third or more because if I get a Carolina chickadee, I'll blow out the whites, but I'm not seeing any Carolina chickadees, so zero is working better. And I'm using the electronic shutter and my drive mode is the very slowest. I'm using bird and animal eye detect autofocus and it's working pretty well for me. I like the slower shutter speeds because I'm not doing a lot of action shots. These are perched shots and the camera tends to focus better on the slower drive mode. That's what I meant to say, not shutter speed. And I end up with a million pictures if I use one of the faster drive modes, but the slow drive mode, I don't have to go through as many shots. Now it's true that I could miss the perfect head angle by not using a faster drive mode, but it's okay. This works out pretty good, and it's a lot easier when it comes time to edit. This is a juvenile mockingbird, and you can tell it's a juvenile by mostly the speckled breast is definitely different on the juveniles. 238 millimeter shot F5 right on the handrail, and this is the same juvenile mockingbird, same settings, still on the handrail, but this time it's begging for its parent to feed it. So I thought that turned out pretty cool with its mouth wide open. And this is its brother or sister, slightly to the left of where that last shot was. And it's funny to me that both birds are standing in the suet droppings from the suet feeder that's just above and out of the frame. And the adult is having to feed the juvenile the suet that it's actually standing on top of. This is 186 millimeters F5. I made a video clip, just a real brief one, of the adult with the two juveniles right in this area. I have my camera mounted on my KNF Concept gimbal. It's working well. I do have a link with a 10% discount coupon code in the description of this video. This is the male red-bellied woodpecker, and like I mentioned earlier, you can see that its reddish-orange feathers go all the way up on the male, and the red belly is showing nicely in this shot. This is the perch that has the suet feeder just out of frame, so it's going to climb up there and go to the suet feeder. This is 151 millimeters wide open at f5 and 1 500th of a second. Let's see, the ISO ended up at 320 on this one. Really love this shot. It's always nice to be able to see the red belly of a red-bellied woodpecker. I just got an outstanding photograph of a brown thrasher right on one of my vertical perches with a solid green bokefied background. Pretty happy with this shot and... It's my first good brown thrasher shot of the year. This is the brown thrasher, 324 millimeters, wide open at 5.6, 500 ISO and 1 500th of a second. Really happy with the way this shot turned out. And I made a burst, if that's what you call it when you're shooting in the slowest drive mode. 
and two or three of the shots were different enough to share. I got this one and then this one with a slightly different pose looking in the other direction and I also got this one. And I tried to do a subtle edit with these where I didn't have a ton of contrast and not a ton of color. I thought the soft colors looked better than really banging out the contrast on this one. And that's kind of the way I did a lot of the photos today. Not a whole lot of contrast in these. But just a beautiful bird and I was happy to see it. I've been seeing them around the neighborhood, but I haven't had one come up onto the porch at a time when I was in the blind to get a shot of it this year. So really happy to see the brown thrasher. I had a really good morning today with the R7 and the 100 to 500. I appreciate you joining me. If you enjoyed this content, please reach down, hit the thumbs up button. That helps me out a lot. And if you want to see some more stuff along these lines and all sorts of other stuff as well, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I sure hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.